you have the right to be here you have the right to take up space and a lot of people need to hear that that you have the right to be here you are here but you're supposed to be here and you take up space you're supposed to take up space and people do want to hear what you have to say provided you're polite of course I've met so many people and uh, who speak very quietly because as children they were told I don't want to hear what you have to say it breaks my heart um, there are some very nasty parents out there and sometimes we have to waken up our own self to the reality of that we deserve to be here and treat ourselves well it is up to each and every one of us to sit ourselves down and accept that because we are here we're supposed to be here and there are people some people had parents who ruined that for them you know, one thing I always told my kids, and this is a great thing to tell your kids, I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad I'm your mom. I'm so glad that you're my son, that you're my daughter, that you're my grandchild. I love being with you. I lo I'm glad that you're in my life. You know, and some people are just very troubled. They have their own issues, which preclude them from being able to be good parents. So a lot of kids missed out on that. So you can give that to yourself and just allow yourself to know, I have a right to be here. Also... People that had very critical parents are often very critical of themselves, right? Because you just kind of mindlessly repeat what you were taught as children. So you have permission to speak kindly to yourself. So if you forget something, instead of saying, I'm such an idiot that I forgot this, you can just be like, oh, I forgot this, and now I remember. Or instead of saying, oh my god, I fucked up this report, I missed all these typing errors, it's like, oh... I'm really careful because I spotted them now and look what I'm learning. I learned from this mistake. Start really speaking to yourself kindly. This is like a huge thing that I think we can all do is start. Um, it's kind of like the gratitude thing where you focus on what you're grateful for is to also focus on what you did well. That doesn't mean you can't acknowledge what you did badly. But for a lot of people, I think they're just so busy thinking that. If I go easy on myself, I will not be successful. I've even had someone tell me that once before. It's like, I have to be harsh on myself. I have to be critical of myself because it's what drives me to do better. And I wasn't going to gaslight this guy, but I'm like, I don't, dis I don't agree with that because I think people can do well because they're passionate about something, because they're driven by something, they're excited about something. Not because they're so hard on themselves um, along with that comes the idea of that when I started learning about self-love I'm like I can't love myself because I'm not perfect only perfect people deserve love like Jesus and then I realized you know I, I, I couldn't it was fucking with my head how can I love myself so a couple things came to mind one thing is what my mom told me she's like just tell yourself the following I give myself permission to love myself. I give myself permission to love myself. And that reminds me of a Khalil Gibran quote where he said, and God told me to love my enemies and I obeyed him and loved myself. Because how many of us are hating on ourselves? We're our own enemy. Every time we say a negative thought to ourselves or have a negative thought or say negative thoughts about other people, like the Manosphere stuff or all women or all men or the Democrats or the Republicans or I did this, we're hating. And God told me to love my enemies and I obeyed him and loved myself. I give myself permission to love myself. You know, it's just reframing our viewpoint. Another thing you can do is imagine a big blanket, a love blanket. It's love. You don't have to be perfect. Just let it fall over you and wrap, wrap yourself in it. Just let this love blanket fall over you and wrap yourself in it. 
okay love just is you don't have to earn it you don't have to earn it you don't have to be perfect to get it you can accept and give it to yourself when i was coaching people i did this exercise also where i had them imagine themselves in a meadow and across from you are everything that you love your dog your friends whatever something you really love and then imagine that feeling of love that you're giving to those people to your dog to your friends whoever and then realize that that love is really in you you're feeling that love that's your love or you can also do it this way it's like all that love that you're giving people that you're giving to them just turn it around and give it right back to yourself because for a lot of people it's easy to love other people not as easy for them to love themselves that's why the chapter one of this book she said be as available to yourself as you would be with someone you love and a lot of that is treating ourselves well and that's what a lot of that shadow work is about is about okay what are the parts of myself that i hate because that's what i'm projecting hate onto other people and what if i can love those parts of myself that i hate the part of me that's jealous that's greedy that's envious that's gluttonous that's nasty whatever love all those parts so it doesn't have that hold on you anymore because we're told we have to hate those parts but we all have those parts it's the world of polarity and to the extent that people repress it like i shouldn't feel anger i shouldn't feel this i shouldn't feel lust then you just repress it repress it instead of just letting it be doesn't mean that you're going to act in some weird way just letting it be giving it space okay so that's um about loving yourself 